text. I'll be there for a moment to say, okay, what is it going on? What is it you want? What do I need to say to our congregation, our body of Christ? And uh, these things came to me. And I said, okay, we'll just try that. So I gathered up this. And, <coughs> and then I remembered about the bubble that I was referring to. What we have this week, I'm not going to get political, okay? I'm just not going to. If you want to talk politics, I love to talk politics. But that's not the point this morning. Who's right, who's wrong is not what I'm going to do. But I want us to think about it. Dr. Ford, she had her experience. And I do not doubt that she had an experience at all. I did hear some way of reconciling what she said. And I heard that if you uh, have a repressed memory and you go into hypnosis for some therapy, sometimes the things that come are implanted in your head and you believe it to be true. I don't know that that's true. I don't think there's enough information to say that. But I can reconcile. Something has happened to that woman and we definitely need to pray for her. Okay. And then the other side, oh, and by the way, if you've ever been molested, you're going to take her side because nobody listened to you. And so you're predisposed to already make a decision. I don't understand that. The other side, if you've ever been falsely accused of being molested or had a lie said about you, if you have, then very likely you see uh, the judge's side. He was very upset and very angry about it his life. And that's his fault. That's where he comes from. And that's his experience. And if neither of those has happened to you, then you're kind of like watching the signs. Where is it? What do I say? What is the truth? Well, both of them have truth. So we are in a dilemma in our country. That's why Deuteronomy came out to me. That's what we are. We are in a war. That's why the two wolves came to me. Yes, we've got a problem. But what do we do as Christians? That's what I want us to look to. What do we do as Christians? We have a government that's, that we vote. We have a system of, of laws that are in place. And... <clears throat> We wonder, what is it, how is this going to work out? I agree. I think our country is so divided. As I listened, I thought, oh, my gosh, there's some, I agree, we need term limits. I mean, they all need to go. Uh, and don't just believe a politician that says they will vote for term limits. I've heard many say they're going to vote for term limits. And that's fine until they get into office and get the power. Power is very corruptible. Power is evil. And it's really raising its ugly head now. So, just, I, I can see that. I understand that. <clears throat> so, what do we do as Christians? Let me, let me uh, read this. this. I've been wanting to use this. But hey, this is the time. It's called Hypocrisies in Church. A member went to the pastor of his church and said, I won't attend church anymore. The pastor said, may I ask why? The member said, I see people on their cell phones, texting during the service, some are gossiping, some just aren't living right. Some are sleeping. Some are staring, staring at me. They are all just hypocrites. The pastor was silent. Then he said, Can I ask you to do something for me before you make your final decision? The member said, Sure. What is that? The pastor said, Take a glass of water and walk around the church two times and don't let any water fall out of the glass. And I said, well, I can do that. He went and got a glass of water, walked around the church two times, and came back and said proudly, it's done with no water 
harvest field. The pastor asked him these questions. Did, did you see anybody on the phone? Did you see anybody gossiping? Did you see anybody living wrong? Did you see anybody sleeping? The member said, I didn't see anything because I was so focused on this glass so the water wouldn't spill out. The pastor told the member, when you come to church and your focus is on God so you don't fall, that's why Jesus said, follow me. He did not say, follow them. Ooh, I just got Holy Ghost goosebumps. I think that's what we want to focus on. That's the message. And anytime you think about it, that's, if you have a question, turn to his word and pray. He'll talk to you. The moral of this story is do not let your relationship with God be determined by how others relate with God. Let it be determined how focused you are on God. Amen. It is good to memorize and think. I thought of this one too. And it's um, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first his righteousness, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So I, that's some of the stuff that we want to turn back to and look at and think about. So as you go through the week and you hear, and there's going to be tugs, there's going to be arguments, and I think that if you start feeling anxious, renew your mind. Go to the Lord, pray, and pray for the poor, pray for the judge, pray for America, pray for our government system, pray for our church, pray for our world. We're in serious trouble because the evil, the, the evil one is very active. Where is your chink in your armor? That's where he's going to go. So be careful. Just be careful. I think we have a serious warning sent out to us. I sense it, and I'm hearing y'all sense the seriousness also. So it reminded me this morning, what do you really have control of? Well, certainly vote. Well, what do you, how to vote? That, that's, that's a given. That's different. And it reminded me of the serenity prayer. What can you control? Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. So be real careful this week as you go along. What can I do? Is it wisdom? I need wisdom to know the difference. Sometimes I go off on this track and I'm thinking, oh, okay, I can't do anything about that. But over here I can. So give me the courage to do what I can. That's what I'm doing. And so I want to know the wisdom and the difference. And I think those are some, some things that have come to me this morning to bring that to you. Get some peace. The devil wants you to be distracted. The devil wants you to be upset. The devil wants you to be um, focused on the anxiety, the tension, the arguing, the yelling, the accusations, and everything. And that's not what God wants us to do. Focus on Him. Watch your focus. When you're upset, <coughs> watch the focus. What are you focusing on? Okay? All right. Let's go. With that. That's the end. I think that's enough. I think that's enough for us to chew on. And I think those are some of the familiar things that you can take. Terry, did you have